Well, greetings, Hopers, Hope Nation, family and friends, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, one and all. The name is the Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Kwesi Botwe on behalf of Hope International Church and Ministries, the city of hope where God is turning hopelessness into hopefulness. Look, it gave me great joy to be sitting in this position today to make this appeal. This is a, an appeal, this is an encouragement, this is an invite for you. It's called simply back to church. I need to slow it down and say it like I know it. Back to church. Make some noise. Glory, hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say glory. Somebody give a thanksgiving. Say thank you, Lord. Why don't you just break up and begin to just thank the Lord. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for where we are. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Beloved, in person and online, we want to welcome you to Hope International Church and Ministries, the city of hope where God is turning hopelessness into hopefulness. We are excited. This is our Wednesday midweek service. It's our Wednesday Bible studies, and we bless the Lord for what he's about to do. This month, we have the privilege and the opportunity to start a new Bible study series. You can see it on the screen, and it's Hope Culture and vision, and we will get into that a little bit. But I believe that this Bible study promises to be something out of the box. I'm telling you, I did go on Facebook at some point in time and on WhatsApp, and I said to somebody or to the, the group there that tonight Bible study will be holistic. And I mean what I say because the Holy Spirit has led me in that way. So once again, I'm happy to see your faces in person. Uh, <laughs> says, look, we, it's good to have you. And if I did butcher your name, don't worry, I got some dollars in my pocket. I'll pay, I'll pay for it. But it's good to have you visit with us on this Wednesday Bible study. I know you are here on Sunday. Uh, we, uh, we couldn't see you on the third day, you know, but we thank God for you and we pray that our relationship goes somewhere. Once again, to you, all of you in person, my pastors, my ministers and leaders, workers and members, God bless you so very much. To you on Facebook and on YouTube and on our website, I love you so very much. We want to do this. I want to pray and enter this Bible studies. And so I want to formally, I guess today is the, the what, fourth, right? So we want to formally welcome you to the month of May. This is our prophetic, come on, make some noise. This is our prophetic month of favor, favor, favor. This is our prophetic month of favor. So I want to pray in a few directions. I, I, I got three things on my list that I believe the Lord wants me to pray for. So if you would join me online and in person. Now, I love the online people. I'm, I'm going to be looking online to see who all was online and the statements and comments they were making. You can't just be watching. This is not a movie. I love you so very much. And head, I, 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 my, head, my heart's to all of our members who can be here, but you're online. We hope that you can be here. So if, if you don't mind me in person, it's just going to take us just a couple of minutes if you can stand. Those who can stand with me. I got three prayer points on my list. I don't know why I'm led this way, but I'm led. The first thing I want us to pray this year, 2022, is our year of making the difference. I want to pray that your life this year will make the difference. That God will make the difference in your life. You got the prayer point? Somebody shout, my father, my father, my father in the name father, of Jesus, the oh God. Jesus. Help me Help to me make a difference this year. Make the difference in my life. Somebody yes, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Make the difference, oh God. We pray 2022. May this year be a year of difference for us. Difference in our family life. Difference in our Christian life. Different in our walk with you. Different in our relationship. Different in our businesses. On our jobs. Help us to make the difference. My Father, my God. We decree and declare the spirit to make the difference is upon your people. On every man every woman every boy every girl and it is in jesus name please say amen i have a problem with praying very short uh, i don't know for some reason i was brought up when you pray you pray long so to do this little popcorn press that's why i name it popcorn it, it kind of uh, uh, bring me to a step this month is our prophetic month of favor i told you my heart desire I told you my, my, my strength and my weakness. One of my weaknesses is I like favor. 
That's, I, I, I'm telling you, my weakness is I uh, like favor. Because what favor can do, your strength cannot do it. What favor can do, your intelligence cannot do it. What favor can do, your humpsomeness or your, 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 your beauty cannot do it. Favor surpasses everything. Somebody, I want you to pray, my father, my father, favor me, oh Lord. Come on, begin to pray, my father, favor me. Let your favor rest upon my life. Let it rest upon my marriage. Let it rest upon my family. Let it rest upon my children. Let it rest upon my relationship. Favor me, oh God. My going out favor. My coming in favor. I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl. Under the sound of my voice, in this sanctuary, favor is on your life. It must manifest in your life. I pray for everyone watching online, Facebook, YouTube, and our website. May favor flow to you. May favor flow to you. The favor of God. In Jesus' name. I want to pray that things will be favorable for you this month. Amen. That things will go your way. Things will be that God will show you strange favor. Somebody say, Oh God. Oh God. Make things favorable for me. Things Let favorable things for become me. favorable for me. Come Let on, begin to, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. The favor of God. The favor of God will protect you. The favor of God will heal you. The favor of God will guide you. The favor of God will provide for you. The favor of God will make ways where there seems to be no way. The favor of God will provoke miracles. Yes, in, in your life, in Jesus' name. In my life. Amen. And lastly, I want to pray for tonight's Bible studies. And then tonight's Bible studies is hope, culture, and vision. And that tonight's subject is vision. And I want to pray that God will do two things I want to pray for. That God will give us a vision for our life or whatever. And that whatever vision God has already given us, that vision will begin to manifest. Somebody say, I hear yes, you. In Two Jesus. in one. Say, my father, my father, my father in the name of Jesus, yes, the give me another Jesus. vision. Give me a fresh vision. Give me a vision for the next level in my life. Give me, for the, give me a vision for the next move of God. I pray that the visions in my life will begin to work. They will be activated. Open Open eyes, oh God. Open eyes, oh God. Open eyes, oh God. Zuzi Zakatu. Zuzi Brakadare Kada. In Jesus' name. So, our Father and our God, we lay these prayer points plus more. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable into that side. Bless this Bible study tonight. Bless him. Bless her. Bless them. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to our midweek Bible study once again. I like to just do my little rounds. Uh, we want to say tomorrow will be Sis Efrida, uh, our birthday. And so, says Frida, if you're watching wherever you're at, happy birthday to you. God bless you. Tomorrow is your birthday. We'll, we're not going to be around. And then on Saturday, I'm going up to this week, to Saturday. Saturday continues to be our brother Eric, our music director, birthday. But Eric, I hear, I heard that you're in the house. Happy birthday. Lord, you came to look for money tonight. <laughs> well, happy birthday to you, son. We love you very much. Thank you for all you do, I hope. And also... Uh, to your sister, says Janet, to Tom's, David's Granby, pretty wife, says Janet Granby, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. We bless the Lord for all of you. We love our people. This is the, the culture of this church. I'm doing this. I always do that, but I'm doing it purposefully again because tonight, uh, can we, uh, uh, tonight, uh, let's, let's bring the flyer up. We want to teach a series uh, 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 for this month entitled. Hope's culture and vision. Amen. In during our Sunday school, we have our ministers that will be teaching uh, the power of vision. And I will say something about that. I really want you to stick with me online and in person. I want you to give me your own divided attention because I am full of myself tonight. I feel like I got something to say. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Minister Chui? Why are you laughing? Yeah, so, so we, with the power of vision. And tonight, I'm going to be talking about vision and yes. The power of it tonight. Talking about hope's vision. Talking about your vision. So, so, so I want you to stick with us. Why it is true, uh, we want to talk about 
hope's vision and hope's culture, the truth of the matter is God lay on my spirit this week that I want you to teach from a holistic point of view. I want you to show the people the importance and the power of vision. Yes, teach about the church's vision, but show them how vision is important in every aspect in different departments of life. And so, uh, as we teach, as I teach during these Bible studies and we teach the hope culture and the hope vision, that's one of our culture. We stop what we do in the church. I, I guess you will not hear this in many churches, the pastor teaching or preaching and calling people names and saying Bible studies. Uh, uh, sometimes people think, you know, because I, I, I keep saying I always spy in class. Sometimes some people think I am not that clever, but I choose what to be clever about. I can always refer to media. Can I have this scripture? Rather, don't you think I'm intelligent to say media? Can I have this scripture? Why do you think I need to be calling the name? Because it's our culture. We make it personal. We make it, we, we are deliberate and we are intentional. We deal with people. We don't just deal with media here. And so I deal with a man back there. His name is Tom Davis Granby. Capitano, a.k.a. That's the culture. Amen. So, so tonight, I want you to, to entertain this thought. We are going to be teaching on hope culture and hope vision. And for Bible studies, that's what we would do. In Sunday school, we got all of our ministers scheduled. And throughout this month, we're going to just be doing what we can do to be able to do. I, I understand that you have heard. And I've said it to a few of you before. Maybe you know exactly what I, I mean. You want to say it, you will say, yeah. Pastor, I've told me. We heard before that church will never be the same again after COVID. I like to add my own to it. You know, I always put in my own behind, behind stuff. That life after COVID will never be the same again. Look, sis came in. She came in with mask on. <laughs> you know, and so on and so forth. But that's how life has changed in so many ways and stuff. And church has changed. And it behooves us not to change the word of God, to keep the word of God, the word of God, but to change the matter and the approaches as we do service. So that's why you may notice that we are bringing in hope culture in our Bible studies and in our Sunday school to begin uh, to teach our people. Uh, there are a few things. We all learn that uh, uh, people go to refresher courses, and, and those of us who are entering uh, different courses, we begin. That would be our new members. If you have joined this church, you're watching online in person, and you have not been to the Hope Culture class, the new members class, uh, there's going to be a time you'll be giving an invitation to know behind the scene. Because what you see on Sunday morning in this sanctuary and in the fellowship hall, it, it is just, uh, how you call it? It's, it's just a smoke of the vision and the culture. The fire is somewhere, <laughs> amen? And so uh, uh, when that time reaches, we will give you the opportunity that you can be a part of it. Uh, we have a sweet culture here. We have a, a, a very godly vision that we follow here and God, we believe that God, that's what God has blessed us and brought us this far is because of our culture and because of our vision. So that's what I'm gonna be teaching tonight. I'm gonna be teaching hope, culture and stuff. And uh, Capitano, if you can, uh, please bring the flyer up. Let me take a few things from on the, I wonder I can see that far. Uh, so, uh, tonight, I'm going to do
hope's dream. So those are the things we're going to be talking about during this month, and they're going to be holistic. You will tell from tonight that even though it has hope attached to it, this thing is going to be for all of us. All of us will find a place in what we're teaching tonight. So let's try this uh, vision stuff, uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, 1 to 3. Let's begin to do something. Let me uh, get off the top. Let me bring our vision scripture. I want you to read with me. Ready, read. I will stain my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Yeah, Habakkuk, the, the prophet, uh, uh, is talking about how he will get in contact with God. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Now, now, now I know I have a weakness in this. Let me just confess. People like y'all who are educated, we're supposed to be reading, but I'm stopping. <laughs> write the vision. Me, I keep telling people I'm not an English teacher, I'm a preacher. <laughs> yeah, write the vision. I want to let some people know tonight that this is true for your personal life, as you will see in a little bit. It's true for your relationship. It's true for your marriage. It's true for your family. It's true for nations. It's true for organizations. It is not just true for the church tonight. So if you came here tonight and you hear me teaching on Hope's vision, which I would do my best to tell you what the, the brief vision of this church is, but I came to get into your business to talk about your vision because I have come to learn that I need a vision, you need a vision. If I will succeed in this life, if you will succeed in this life, if we'll go as fast as we need to go, it will be predicated upon the vision that we have. Uh, and so, so, so write the vision. I don't know who you are, but I'm going to start as early as I can. I want you to know that you will need to write the vision. Whatever vision you have received, whatever vision was given to you for whatever organization or place you find or whatever vision God has given to you or vision that you will need to develop, we'll get to it. You need to write the vision. You need to write the vision. Write the vision and make it plain. Make it plain. Uh, 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 Habakkuk say on, uh, God say on tablets. It's God talking to Habakkuk here that he may run who reads it. Don't go, Capitano. Please stay there. There is something that I am getting in love with in the scripture to look at every word, look at every phrase and every sentence and see. They say that he may run who reads it. Do you, do you, just, just look at your crazy pastor. You're running and reading. It has to be plain. Make the vision plain. Make it so clear. But it's not only literary that you can run and read. That phrase, run and read, also talk about it's so in your subconscious, man. It's so in your spirit that you can just run with it. Oh, no, that's what the scripture is meaning. There, there, there is a literary part of the text. There is a letter part and the spirit part. To, the spirit part that your vision for your life your vision for your marriage, your vision for your relationship, your vision for your family, your vision for your this and your that, the vision for the church has to be so plain that it's in your spirit that you can run with it. Amen. Verse 3. Verse 3. I'm coming. I'm getting there. We're talking tonight about vision. We're talking about vision. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. To be honest, that's how visions are. There are some visions that come quick. There are some that will take a time. There are other visions you have to work. But most vision is like that. They come in segment, they come in time. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. I'm telling you, if you have a vision, you work it, and we will get into it. The vision will speak at the end. It will not lie. It will not lie. Though it delays, though it tires, though it a lingo's wait for it because it will surely come it will not tire hallelujah and, and, and so this is our key text that is controlling all of our teachings in different ways you have different ministers you have different pastors and whatever it is teaching from different angle and bringing different revelation from there but we are here to talk about hope culture 
and hope vision. And I just want to do this on the culture part and move, since that's my focus tonight, on hope culture and hope vision, and I'll go straight to vision. Uh, it's, it's crazy in this church. You will know that besides the mouthful of our vision, our vision is simply put together in few words, turning hopelessness into hopefulness. I know it's very stylistic. I know all of our members know it, I, 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 the, the catchphrase of our vision, but that vision is not just a catchphrase for fun and, and for things. Turning hopelessness into hopefulness is that when people come in who don't know Jesus Christ, they are hopeless. Forget about all the money stuff. Yeah, I will get to that. You know me, I won't shy. But when you come and you don't know God and your life is, is out of whack and stuff, my hopelessness in coming to this church must turn, must turn, must turn into hopefulness. Turning hopelessness into hopefulness. One of the most miserable or hopelessness in life is not being broke. It's not being destitute. It's not knowing Jesus Christ. Oh, just because you see people driving cars and living large, is that they are hopeless without Jesus Christ. It's time for Christians to, to, to walk with confidence and say, you know, I got Jesus, I got everything. I mean, I have the money you got and do the things you do, but I got hope, I got everything. When this flesh and this body is laid aside, there is hope for me in glory. Somebody shout, shout I got hope, I got hope. Yeah, we, you know, we, 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 we have materialized our lives so much that people don't even enjoy their, their salvation anymore. People don't enjoy the Christian life, that we have this treasure, we are situated, that our, our future and our eternity is secure. We're not worried too much about that. It's about what we can get in and now in this flesh. All of us, one day will die if Jesus tarry. If Jesus tarry, one, of, one day all of us will die. Hallelujah. And so our vision is turning hopelessness into hopefulness. And we start from it in the spiritual perspective. Amen. That a man and a woman, I say it on Facebook and on YouTube, who don't know Jesus Christ, I love you and respect you. You are hopeless. You are without hope. I encourage you to come and buy of hope. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. That's the vision of Hope International. It's about bringing men in contact with his Savior. Hallelujah. It's turning people hopelessness into hopefulness. But that's not only that. On the spiritual spectrum, do you know that when you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, do you know that when you are broke, when you don't have business, when you don't have papers, you don't have this, and you come to this church, and our intercessory, and our ministers, and our pastor pray for you, and the favor of God, like in this month, rests upon you, and things turn around, your health, you are sick, and there's a, it's turning your hopelessness into hopefulness. Somebody say, I hear yeah, so, so, so that's, that's a sum total of our vision, turning hopelessness into hopefulness. Now, now, now let me tell you something about our culture. Uh, uh, we have spoken, this church is 12 years old, so if you've been around for a while, you may have heard it, but I will say it again. Our culture, in so many ways, is, is second class to our vision and to the scripture. Because nothing, nothing, wherever exceed the word of God. If anybody tells you anything, no matter how good it sounds, if it's not scripturally back, it's a lie. And God is not obligated. Okay, I, I, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't say it's, it's a lie because everything people tell us are not scriptures and stuff like that. But only what God wrote in the war, he is obligated to bring to pass. Are we coming along with me? Yeah, only what God wrote in his word is obligated. So our culture is something like this, and I will tell you. I don't know what I got in trouble the other day, but nobody wrote me a complaint. So the trouble maybe was not too big. But everybody who knows me know that I, I, I love America. You know that, right? It's not... I, it's not the good thing in America. I just really love America. I was fighting to come to this country. God knows. Hallelujah. But the point I'm making is this. That Americans 
and, and, and non-Liberians, they will attack me because they know more history better than I do. You know, I know what I know and I don't know. I always just say something that, huh, can I just talk it Christian-wise? Okay, let me just act like I'm going to do it a Christian way. Like, Liberia was raised by America. <laughs> <laughs> so your Liberians know exactly what I'm talking. Liberia was raised by America. We were brought up by America. In Africa, the AKA for Liberia is Petit America. All over in different African countries, especially French speaking country, they call Liberia Petit America. In all of the whole world, other than American territories in America, the only country in the whole world to ever use the United States currency as its staple currency is Liberia. Oh no, that, that one I, I, I studied small too, so you better talk. Don't say Pastor, only Baba, he know. Now I know that history, I'm telling you. Only Liberia that use it. So let me not make, over make the point so you understand that Liberia was raised by America. You understand that more of Liberia's style and our flow and our lingo, and even the way we speak English, we are speaking English close to like the Americans. And some words, your Liberians, you can really, really pronounce it good, you know, but so we're gonna leave it that way, you know, and stuff. But the point I'm trying to make, and I'm going all around to make sure that everybody understands that no, he means well, is that Americans are not too dogmatic about culture. They flow, they cool, everything go. Even when you come to food, when you come to food, cultural food, <laughs> it's a problem to find American cultural food hamburger. Everybody starts saying chicken, chicken, chicken. And <laughs> says, Kisha, why are you acting like that? I'm an American too, I love our country. Liberians are like that. Thank God that we have different dialects and, and traps and stuff, so it makes it different. Certain traps in Liberia are more cultural oriented, oriented than setting traps. I know the same thing is in Sierra Leone and most African countries and stuff like that. So this thing about culture that I'm trying to push about vision, about culture. First of all, I started by saying if you don't have a vision, you're in trouble. That means you don't know where you're going. If you don't have a vision, you're in trouble. You're going by day by day. So anywhere the journey takes you, that's where you're going to go. Let's be honest, and we need to say, and I pray for you, I pray for me, that that will not be our life. That by the time this teaching is over, all of us will clinch to, most of us got vision. Some of us have abandoned it, it it's too difficult, it, it, it's taking long. The Bible says in Habakkuk, the, though the vision tarry, wait for it. Some of us are like, I ain't waiting for you anyway, and I drop you and stuff like that. But we want to make you understand that you need a vision. So the same thing I want to say about culture. And today I rehearsed something, and you're going to look as I talk about hope has a culture, and our culture is second class to the scripture, to the word of God. Because if there is anything we practice as a group of people that does not equal to the word of God, we cannot make it a rule. So it's just a lifestyle. I, I know you, you, you know how to define culture. Culture can be defined as a way of life for a group of people. Okay, if you study Revelation, you study the seven churches in Revelation in Asia manner, you will understand the different, the seven churches had different characteristics and behavior and focus and lifestyle. Even when Jesus was talking to them, he said, I know you flamboyant, you this, you that. I know you, you don't have time for this. So churches, even though they are churches, they are born by Jesus Christ and they preach the word of God, but they have different approach, they have different style. Certain church was meant to do certain things and to do certain things in the confines of preaching the word of God. So, so uh, 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 there is one culture as I talk about, okay, so let me talk about whole culture. Like you see, I was starting to say that I will interfere, I will call people name in a service. To be honest, what I'm doing eh, is very unorthodox. Don't mind me, I guess since I went to Bible school, it's very, it, it, it's untrained for you to be preaching a sermon and stop and say, oh, you know, I see you, how are you? And so they'll be like, what wrong with this? Come on, you know, you're preaching and this, that. But we have a culture. We have a way. We talk certain ways. I'm a Texan. When I came to America, the only state I live in is Texas. 
So if I'm claiming, I claim few things. I claim I was, I'm an American. I was born in America. I was born in Texas and I was born in Ulysses. Oh, I know. One day I told a, a lady like that, we were talking. She said, so why were you born? I said, in you She said, oh, for real? I said, yes. She said, but how you sound the way you sound? I said, because I was very weak, uh, uh, troublesome, and my mother sent me to Africa. So my accent, she said, oh. When she read it, believe what I was saying. She says, look, laughing. When she read it, believe what I was saying. I said, no, I'm just kidding. I just, <laughs> she said, you almost got me there. I'm like, yeah, right. I almost got you there. Um, but, 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 so. You will notice, let me do New York and do Texas. You will notice that New York culture and Texas culture are different. So the way we carry ourselves at Hope International, besides our vision and the word of God, we make sure we have a uniqueness of flow and a style. Hope vision and hope culture. I'm here to teach the vision and the culture. So you understand while we talk the way we Texans talk, that's our accent. You know, many Texans don't, Texans don't know they got accent, but we do. Put us against New Yorkers, you will know. <laughs> Amen? And stuff like that. So, so we, got, we got a particular lifestyle or culture. Texans got where way they operate. Do you know that the booth and the cowboy hat Texas wear? Do you know it's a cultural thing that is traceable to Texas? If you go anywhere in America and you wear your heart and you wear your cowboy boots, everybody know oh, this Texas boy or girl is in town and stuff like that and so on and so forth. And so we as a church, not bending scripture, that's why sometimes you see our camps with different color. She came to church, uh, let me pronounce your name, Lequee, right? Lequee. She came to church, we, we met her a couple of weeks ago, but she came to church on the day we preached the third day. I can't even remember the service and stuff like that and so on. But she was saying that she felt a little uncomfortable because all of us were in white. See how that's our culture? That's our culture. Nothing wrong with it. Now, not scripture, you can be in blue and be here. God will still bless you. But that's the culture of the church. That's how we do this, we do that. Do you know that there are some very good fathers in the law and pastors friends to me uh, who have asked me, how are you guys able to carry on this thing for, I think the time they asked me was well, about 10 years. For 10 years, every Wednesday you come to church, you eat food. How do you do it? I'll be like, that's our culture. God told us to do it. Some way, somehow, it is not easy, but it is done. The people are accustomed to it. We got food. I got food to my house, but when I come to church, if they don't give me food, I'm anxious. I, I like, where, where, where's my own plate? Because it's a cultural thing for us at Hope International. And so uh, 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 there, are, there are ways we carry ourselves and we behave that is different. Our name, our slogan, our day. Let me ask you, which church do you know outside of Hope International in America that got month of favor, month of breakthrough, month of this, this is our year of this? It's a it's a cultural thing to us. We are uniquely tied that way, and we take proud in it. Some of our culture are expensive. You think by any color of our clothes we do, you think it's not? It's telling on some people. It stretches some people. That's why I let some people know if you can't do it, God knows your heart. Don't let this. This color coding is not scripture. Pure. So do what you can do, but we, we want to teach our culture, we want to teach our vision, because we believe that if a person doesn't have a vision, you're going nowhere, you're just going in circle. You're just going in circle. If you don't have a culture, you have no uniqueness towards you. Culture is about our uniqueness, our value, because culture is a set of a, a shared values and belief that people have. Okay, I, I know I have some Americans here, and I use Texas and New York, but those of us who hail from Africa, you know what I'm talking about. If you're from Liberia, you know what a crew, you know how a crew man is different from a Loma man. You know, you know. If you're from Sierra Leone, you know how a Limba man is different from a Timini man or a Mende man. You know. Now, the truth of the matter is, you cannot go to a Mende land or to a crew people and tell the crew people to change their culture so you can fit in their culture. No. 
You may choose to abide by the culture or not abide by the culture, but you can't tell them to change the culture. Nobody will change the culture because of you. And I have learned that people who wants to belong to people, they find ways to adapt to the culture for as much as possible. And so that's what we want to teach. For me as a pastor and somebody who belongs to the church, I take pride in this church. I really take pride in this church that this church is unique among churches. The way she carries herself, the way she behaves her way, the way we do other things and stuff like that, our culture in line with the word of God is good. We got a slogan slogan called come and see don't worry you will get the and all the old people know in new people you will get those packets you got come and see and it, it was nathaniel telling his friend they, they said can any good thing come out of egypt you know what he i mean nazareth they say come and see let me show you jesus and so that's one of our slogans we get and stuff so as we teach this hope culture and hope vision our intention my agenda my goals and my strong belief is that you and I, who have already been a part of this vision for a long time, we have the vision reawakened in our spirit. The Bible says, faith cometh, and it cometh by hearing and by hearing. And so the more we hear the word of God, the things of God, this, that. And so that we bring some of our people, because when people are taught and they are educated and they have a say so in why you do what you do they find more pride and identity with it i said this last, last thing on culture and i will go fast like a lightning uh hell I, I i gotta be very honest because i want to do this culture so uh, of course you know i come from africa there is one african culture that i really like only because of all the good reason because it gives it's difficult to raise a child in America. And I'm not talking about anything negative. I'm talking about everything positive. It's difficult. You will spend money. You will spend time. In Africa, I want to be honest with you. When I wake up in the house that I used to live in, we open the door, the front door and the back door wide open. And it's going to stay open for the rest of the day until we're ready to go to bed and our children can go from this person's house to that person's house. They can walk here and walk there. You can never do that in America. So that's a different system and culture, but that's not the point. That's not my main point. You know I hide in my main point. I'm bringing it. My main point is about our culture of our young daughters getting married or engaged. I want to share something with you. I really want to bring a real situation. We have a culture that is slightly different from Western culture. I'm not going to say American culture. I'm going to say Western because it's Western culture. I don't know whether you know my first biological daughter, you know Irene, right? So Irene is going to be 23 uh, years in no, no, uh, November. And maybe after she turned 33 or 34, I will change my preaching tactics. I can't be calling her age again because you don't be patrolling with women age all around and stuff. So, but she having grumble about that yet because she's outspoken like me. She will talk if she sees something. But Irene can't come home in this Western culture and fling her hands to me like this. But then engage. No, y'all come along with me. I want to make this teaching. I told you this teaching will be very holistic. It will be real. I'm going to get to vision, but let's talk about culture. It may not be uh, 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 forbidden the word of God, but you see the value in the culture because this kind of culture, women in, in the Bible, uh, 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 biblical days, they went for women to their parents, to their father's house. They gave goose, they gave Adam in a change. In this Western, in this 21st century we live, you, 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 you sleep in and your daughter just goes somewhere and, and some kind of guy just say, he need that on. What need do you need that on? <laughs> Benny, you know, what need? Right or left? Eh? You from Texas for real. Texas, they, they, they care less. Like, Texas, they get time. You know, okay, let's do the left. Says I can only bend on my left for now. <laughs> so the trouble here is, and he go and he blows Iron Man up. Then, then, and he hope, hoping someone will give back. You know how much money I'm not spending on Iron? 
you know the sleepless night I got. You know what I'm going through? And you go open several hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollar gift back. Then, and then she takes that ring and she comes home walking. I don't know what kind of foot she using. And then, and engage that. No, y'all, y'all would disrobe me as a pastor in this church. Y'all would tell me, say, Pastor, you got too much uh, uh, excitement in you. You need to sit down for a month. Let the excitement go down. And I will gratefully sit down. Me or my, my wife, mother is more. And by the way, mother is good to have you in Bible study. Please. Yeah. 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 So, so and, 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 you know, mother wasn't feeling well on Sunday. She was feeling very weak and getting different things. But she, she bounced back. You know, mother controls one part of my life so she always need to be well and she doesn't get sick of that so first of all seriously in god i'm happy with you but now we're coming to move from in god now we're coming to come in natural thing so what happened to the pregnancy because the, the symptom my wife was showing oh i can't see the place looking dark you know i'm weak that's also where can you I tell you, see, my, my sister is here. She said she told me something is on her. So we need to see you. We need to go to the doctor and go check you. You can't come back in my house and just say, oh, I'm feeling good now. And then before I load it in, <laughs> But you got the joke, so let me move on. The serious point of this, because I was talking, my wife is also more, that's why I come, I remember, to call. She's more traditional in that way. She feels like certain things should be done out of respect and courtesy and stuff. These things are cultural things. These things are cultural things and stuff like that. And so just to bring in context, but we, we have already said it, and I know you can ask some direct question when we get to question. No, we're not going to twist and turn anything. If the culture does not uh, relate to the word of God, it's not scriptural, it will come second class. If we say, let's wear all this blue, I don't have blue today, I will wear what I have and we accept you in church. Please, we need to be, we can't make people feel bad, but something that is not the word of God. No. Yes, we want a culture, we want to look this, but people need to understand that. Look, you're welcome here, and what you are liable to fulfill is the word of God, because that's what we all do. The other things are things that unite us together. Are you coming along with me? So let me do this real quick, because I, I know you want to get to the question and answer time. I want to get to it. So we're talking about vision. We're talking about culture. You must have a vision for your life. You must have a vision for your life. You, you, uh, uh, um, Capitano, uh, uh, Tom, can you just find those four levels of vision that are, are just levels of vision? I mean, I, I know it's not in sequence, but just find your way to the four levels of vision. Let me share this with these people, then I will go back and start from the beginning. Four levels of, so, 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 yes, levels of vision. Yeah, yeah, let, let's see number one, son. Okay, so flow here with me. I want you to understand when I told you that this Bible study would be holistic, we meant that. We put the hope vision that we put on the calendar to the last because we wanted to prioritize some things. The first level of vision here is personal vision. If you don't, I'm telling you, you are in trouble if you don't have a personal vision for your own life. Even those, I'm telling you, you will be taking to and fro and this and that. There is personal vision. As we teach about the vision, I am actually encouraging people to get a personal vision for your life. I don't care whether you are married or not, or you are dating or not. There is something called personal vision. If you don't have a personal vision for your life, you are hijacked. You are hijacked. And I'm saying it clear on the wall. Give me the second level of vision so you see where another come in. Couples and families vision. How you are going to get married to a man or a woman and start to have a couple vision and a family vision, but you don't have a personal vision. You don't even know what you want to do and stuff like that. And then that's where probably come. The second level of vision is couples. This is our obligation to teach you. As couples, we must have vision. 
This thing about, oh, my husband can go to any church. I can go to any church. Oh, my husband can keep his own money. I keep my own money. I pay this. I pay this. I don't know your case. I'm not a bad, but I'm going to teach as a man of God. You must have a vision for your money. If that's the vision you got for the money, fine. You must, got, you must have a vision about your spirituality. You must have a vision how to raise your child. You must have a vision for this, for that, and the other thing. I understand some of you here are nurses, and your wife and your husband are nurses. I understand that. That means maybe your pathway, God, but we got different individual visions for ourselves. Some people are businessmen, a businesswoman, and their husbands are something else. To be honest, I understand my wife is a minister of the gospel. She's ordained, but my wife is a nurse. I'm not a nurse. I'm a pastor. And if you want to move the spirituality from there, take away her, her ministerial title, take away my pastoral title. I am a Christian counselor. Yeah. I'm a Christian counselor. She's a nurse practitioner. And, and, and it's not by guess. Many of you know I have opened a counseling center before. So I'm not trying something. I have, in the public field, I have had a counseling center where I operated for more than two years. As soon as I opened this church, the counseling center closed. You know why? <laughs> you know why? You know why? Oh, you see that pastor? He got a church and he got a counseling center. So he, he, he now, he don't cancel his members, you know, he, he said <laughs> to his counseling and different things. So the counseling center had to go that I couldn't do both of them together. I said do some other things. But there is family, there is couple and family uh, a vision. We're talking about vision. If you don't have a personal vision, if you don't have a family relationship vision, we will suffer. Give me the third level. I know there are, there, 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 there are a few more. Give me the third level, uh, uh, Tom. The third level of vision. Organization vision. That's where Hope International come in. Hope International is a church, I understand, but we are an organization, if you wait, under the umbrella. And so there are levels of vision. And tonight, we want to talk about our vision. If you as an individual have a vision, and you cherish your vision, and you work in your vision, if you as a couple, as a family have a vision, and you cherish, and you trust in God in praying for your vision, what makes you think that a whole institution does not have a vision? And the vision is not important to this, to this institution. That's why when we come, when individuals have vision, and they have marital or relationship vision, and, 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 and family vision, when they come into an organization, you see some difference in there because they respect vision. They respect vision. And be honest with you, maybe some of us have not paid attention to what vision is, how vision can control things, and vision is the brain or the life between anything, so people act up. But anybody who is a smart visionaire, who has a vision for their life, they get into a place, they understand there is a way here, there's a vision here. This whole organization must have a vision. What's the vision to go away? So there's organizational vision. Come on, let's give me the last one, I believe. And there is nation's vision. America has a vision. And America visions come in for two or three political parties. The independents, that would be us. The Democrats, that would be some of y'all. And the Republicans, that would be some of y'all. <laughs> I can only talk about myself, I don't know. And America as a country in its uh, different policies and stuff like that, it has where it's going. But every time a government takes place, they reset where they want to move the country for a time. So there are nations' vision. Hallelujah. Somebody said we're talking about vision tonight. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we're talking about vision. So you must have a vision. Uh, uh, Capitano, can you go to Proverbs uh, 29 and 18? I got to go very quick. Let me wear my goggles and see. Okay. Proverbs 29 and 18. Please read along with me. No, oh yes, that's not. Read it, read. Where there is no, that, that, that revelation is a vision, the people cast off restraint. But unhappy is he who keeps the law. And, and, and in a, another form of energy, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Capitano, yes, good, uh, uh, King James. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I know you know what it is. We're not going to push it. But you as a person, you need a vision for your life. As couples, we're dating, we're in relationships, we're married, we need a vision. We got families, we need a vision. We're in organizations, we're in a country, we need visions. Vision, 
vision, vision. Tonight, we're not just going to be dogmatic and just talk about church, 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 vision. We will talk about, but we want to help and empower our people that all of us need a vision. All of us, all of us need a vision. Capitano, let, let's start with some of those notes and see. Let's start from the top. Let, let's define vision, and I think I want to move a little bit to some stuff. So, so a vision can be given, please listen, or developed. Don't move, stay there. A vision. You can, you can receive a vision in so many places in the Bible. People receive vision from God. God gave them vision. And all people develop vision. You yourself, all the visions you got today were not just only given to you or you received by God. There are certain visions that you develop for your life. Because vision guides, it control, it propels or a lead or fall. So I want you to understand a vision can be given or develop. Amen? Come on, Capitano, let's move. Let's do this thing. Let me, uh, a vision is the driving force or life, or, or, or life of any organization. Any organization, the vision is, let me tell you, if a man and a woman is married, they live in, to, to, they, in a relationship and they don't have a vision, I'm telling you, they have a problem. It gives it direction. The vision gives that relationship, that organization, direction, meaning, and purpose. Without vision, you don't have direction, you don't have meaning, you don't have purpose. That's why as a church, I know I'm pushing on your life because it's people that make up churches. Amen? We are the church for real. Hallelujah. So my emphasis is on you. But as this organization where we call the church, we have a vision. And the appeal in teaching vision and culture is to appeal to each and every one of you. To please learn the vision, master the vision, adopt the vision, respect the vision, and follow the vision. Because just like in your personal life, vision matters. What's the next bullet point, Capitano? Okay. I wrote something about English there, right? <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so the, the purpose of teaching hope culture and hope vision is to get our church as we go into uh, the next uh, quarter or season so that our people are refreshed with the vision and their, their minds are refreshed with the culture. So we embrace our culture, embrace our vision, and that we can move across. Uh, 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 the organization, organizations are controlled by its vision. Amen. Organizations are controlled. In fact, look, what drives you every day is your vision, your goals for your life. Give it any name you want to give it. Call it your passion, your this, your that. We're dealing with the world's vision, so you can copy and put it in. But what drives you, what moves you in life, what controls you, the organization is controlled by its vision. You are controlled by your vision. Look, if your vision is like me to get up every day and just walk about and do nothing, you are controlled by your vision. I only know how to talk about me. I can't, I can't tell you that. But you can. What's the next slide? What's the next slide? The church's, the church's operations and mission are tied to its vision. I know sometimes we come to church and people want this to happen. They want to see this and they want to see that. But whatever we are doing in this church, everything adds up to a vision. It's a, it, everything is surrounded. That hopelessness into hopefulness is all vision. We eat is about our vision and our culture. We give money is about vision and our culture. And so everything we do is tied to the vision. Yeah. Our operation and our mission is that. And that's why when I ordain people, when I install people into office, I tell people purposefully over everybody, uh, in front of everybody that, will you put this church's vision about your own vision or interest, this church? Because sometimes our personal feelings get in the way of the church vision. Oh, that's not my style. That's not my flow. No, we know that's not your style, not your flow. But as a church, we're asking you to do this because that's a vision. The group you have come to be a part of, this is what propels the group to take up. What's the next slide? Yeah, that's the next slide. A vision is very important for people, organizations, and nations. 
Let's be honest. Don't let me go to your nation before you come and look for me in America. But some of our nations are struggling and you may figure it up for yourself because there is no vision. Oh no, I can talk it because I am America. Yeah, because there's no vision. There is no vision. So a vision is very important for people. Can I come close to you? Not you directly, but you will know yourself. You see some people going this way, going this way. I don't know what to go right. I don't know what to go left. It's because some of us don't have vision. Vision is important for people, for organization, and for nation. If you join this church, let's be honest. If you join this church, and you notice that this church never had a vision or a culture or uniqueness or belief system that ties the people together, that makes us know you will question some things. Be like, what kind of church? What, what, what are we going by? What the vision? So thank God that we belong to a church that do have a vision. What's the next slide? Let me keep going. I don't have much time. Vision drives individuals, couples, Families and nation, what drives all that vision? Call it, I'm going to work for money in that vision. You know what I tell some of folks that comes close to me and we talk about this? I say, stop acting like you love your job. You don't love your job, you love money. If they stop paying you to that job, you will stop going to that job. So don't, don't even think, yeah, let, let's be honest and stuff like that. But that's vision. The vision is we need money and this, and don't bother because I put love there. I know we're not supposed to love money. You mean, I mean, we want money. Let, so, so vision drives individual. It drives couple. It drives family and nation. As we teach the vision, I want to really talk to you in your own uniqueness. I need you to have a vision for yourself. As an individual, I can be married to my, 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 my wife and only her got vision and telling us, what, what vision do I have for my own life? Don't come tell me the two shall be one together. There will be places where we got family vision and couples vision, where we do things together, but what is my own uniqueness? What's my own vision? What's my own vision? Because when you have a personal vision, you will respect couples vision. When you have a couple vision, you will respect a, a, a family vision. When you have a family vision, you will respect organizational vision. When you have organization, you will respect the nation's vision. That's why I get baffled, and I know I'm going, stepping into some people's country and coming back. I get baffled how some of the people who lead our countries in Africa came and lived like me in America. It's almost now I live in a, this America, and then I go back to wherever country I want to go because I belong to about three of them there. I go back anywhere I want to stay, and then the lifestyle and the changes and the development I saw in America, I can even take it back to my own country. And I go and start doing all kind of things. And other people, when the people lack vision, the people will perish. What's the next slide, Capitano? I'm moving very fast. These people want to ask me some questions. Let me finish this slide quickly. So, 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 yes, I, 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 I go. Hope has, hope vision has three legs. You know it. You've been around here. It's a tripod, one, two, three legs, and I want to go. Give me leg one, Capitano, if, if that's how it's in your door or whatever. So the first one is spiritual growth. When we say turning hopelessness into hopefulness, and we say this, uh, to be honest, you see, look at how Bible study is looking. By the way, can you just clap for somebody who came to Bible study? When you clap, you clap it for somebody. Bible study number is increasing. Our people are coming back. I thank God for this church. People are coming back, you know, little by little, and we bless the Lord. You're watching on Facebook, waiting for you. We want to see you so we can clap for you too. But thank you for joining online. But the vision of this church is three legged The first leg is spiritual growth. It's developing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, knowing God for yourself. That is why some of us do fall in problems in this church. We try to do other things but spirituality is the reason for the church can we teach this here can we teach that value here but you being saved you doing right you knowing jesus you knowing god by yourself you able to pray by yourself you're able to have your devotion you're able to read your bible and stuff like that that's the purpose of this church spiritual growth you must grow. So look at your life. I cannot assess you somebody cannot access you because you know yourself are you growing spiritually that's the vision of this church. You can't come in this church year after year, you remain the same. The same thing that used to make me mad, still makes me mad. 
the same thing that trapped me. That means I'm not growing, I'm not changing. We have to grow, we have to change, especially in the law, in our walk with God, our spirituality. We need, if you came and joined this church and you left pastor and you, you got it sin, you, you need to, st every time, every, you need to be dropping them, dropping them. But now, you shouldn't be having sin. Like what we be talking about, uh, this is, uh, everybody got something in their calendar. I always like to throw this bad talk to people. You want to come to my house? You know my house is open to every member. Come there, let's go in my, in, in my closet. See what else calendar in my closet. Not calendar in my closet. My closet clean. I only go there to go look for clothes. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's clean. No skeleton. You cannot be a Christian for this long and stay be holding on to sin. I'm talking about spiritual growth. I'm talking. We, we, we are all not where we're supposed to be, and I don't stand here to justify myself, but our goal in coming to this church is to keep taking one step closer to Jesus, learning new scripture every day, developing our prayer life, our devotion life, dropping bad habits, learning how to cope with people and stuff. So the first leg of our vision in the church, why are we making noise about this? Because we want people to come here and know that, yes, we got so many other things to do, but the chiefest purpose why our church is built is so that people can know Jesus Christ and be saved. So your salvation is what is most important in this church. Every other thing can come and not, uh, 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 second class to class, uh, it can come third or fourth. But your salvation is important spiritually. We are asking you, as we talk about the vision of the church to grow spiritually, we are asking you to make deliberate effort. Ask for help that we are able to help you put a pressure on us. Put a demand on us. Pastor, I want to grow. Pastor, I want to change. Pastor, how can you help me? How can You need to do that. Spiritual growth. You can take the horse to the water. But you can make the horse. We have passed that stage where I can chew food for you and put it in your mouth for you to, to swallow it. We passed that stage. That's the baby stage. You are past. You're too grown now. I can't chew nothing for you like that. So that the second leg, second leg, okay, the second leg, second leg, is financial growth. And, I, and I'm not, I, I, I want you to know that as we bought this church, you pay money, you contribute. First of all, it was money that we used. And this financial growth, let me tell you something. So you don't look at it and think that the church is coming to you for money. This financial growth is in twofold, and God has been helping me to see differently. This financial growth is for you first before the church. Minister Deborah, if you don't have money, you have money in Jesus' name, Mama, but I know I can just, if you don't have money, you think I can talk about money, yet you give it? No. You can't give what you don't have. So if we talk about financial growth, if we're talking about our people being financially able and capable, that God blesses you. He gave you seed to sow and bread to eat on every side. So financial growth. So the first leg of this vision is spirituality. But you think how we got this church. Now don't, don't, don't let me fool you. Prayer work. The prayer, it worked in us getting this place. But also money was involved. The prayer opened doors and slacking things off. But we still had to bring money. You said in all of you here, I, I know your faces, besides new people and stuff, all of you here give money, bought items. They are in this church and stuff like that for us to come here. So financial growth. To be honest, I got to be honest with you as I share this church vision with you. I, I, I so love you and so happy tonight. I get nothing, but I really want to bring some conviction to you. If you come into this church and you say this is your church and you don't tie to this church or you don't financially support this church, you are in serious error. Let me be frank. Let me stop. Let me look on Facebook. If you call this church your church and you are not financially, you're not tied in and you're not financially responsible to your church, it's an error. You're just playing talk with people. And sooner or later, we'll catch up with you one day. All of us need to be financial. First of all, we're going to pray for you that you will have it. Because if you don't have it, you can't give it. But then if you have it, you can prioritize the church. I can tie to the church. I financially support my church. I give to my church. I meet financial things. So that's the second thing about this church. Spiritual growth and financial. The tail leg. The tail leg. Tail leg. Tail leg. And there is a social support. And, 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 and for this, I would rather want to read a scripture because other ones I know you can, but I, I, I added a scripture today. The, the, the third thing about this vision that God gave us is social support. 
first of all, how are we part of a church where we don't uh, intermingle? The only time we see and we deal with each other is in the four walls of this church. But when you see me outside, you don't even talk to me. You're not kind to me. You don't know me. Some of us don't call each other. Uh, 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 and we're not saying that forbiddenly because some of us can't keep up with the activities. And nobody's going to come and join our activities in the name of hope culture. No. Look, I'm teaching very balanced tonight. I may not be able to go to all your parties and all your stuff, and it doesn't make me something wrong with me. No, I just can't be everywhere at the same time. I pick and choose our stuff. But we put this social support there so that we can support one another. My daughter is graduating. Few of the people from the church who can come. You see it? They come. That's a social. There's no register. Oh, I need to see you. Pastor, you are not here in this that. Why are you calling me and asking me I'm not there for? Did I sign up with you that I got to be there? <laughs> yeah, Let, let's slack on this culture stuff. Let's, let's people want to do it. It's not by force, but it's the church culture to do this and stuff like that. As I begin, as I was talking about social support here, so we get the spiritual, we get the financial, we get the social. Let me read this, let me bring this scripture to you so you see it. Romans 12 and 15. Romans. That means if you're here, you need to learn Romans if you're married. You must learn how to Romans. Romans 12 and 15, it says, Rejoice, please, I want you to read with me. Rejoice with those who rejoice. And weep with those who weep. I know you all know Bible in this church just like me. I trust my church. How do we practicalize the scripture? No, we want to be over spiritual. We want to talk. How do we practicalize the scripture? How do you rejoice with people that rejoice? You smile with them, you shake their hands, you laugh with them. How do you move with them? You, 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 you bear the infirmities with them and the weakness with them. And that's all we do. I don't think I will go to every uh, 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 wedding or every engagement or every funeral, but I should be if I can in this, that. But that's what we do. That's the social support. That to be honest, something happened to pastor. I, I learned, I saw some people send me texts, oh, pastor, I, I got some secret on some people. Pastor, can you send me mother number? So I said, oh. So ever since we've been in the church, you never have mother number. There's that, but they wanted to communicate with mother and, and stuff like that. But that's a social support. Mother was in well. She was home. Many of you reached out to her through text message or stuff like that. Or at least we pray for her. So nobody got no register. Oh, you didn't call me or you didn't text me. But we pray for her in church that God will heal her. She's healed. She's here. The truth of the matter is that's the social aspect. Now, I got a problem every time I talk about social. You know, I'm school when it comes to words and when I want to be intelligent. There are definitions in that stuff. Anytime Christian people hear social, some kind of cycle get in our mind, like something wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with social. It depends on what kind of social stuff we are talking about. And I was, I think I've met with Pastor Ron today. I was telling Pastor Ron, I said, Pastor Ron, do you know that bereavement funds in church is a social program? Bereavement, as spiritual as it sounds, that, oh, when somebody that it's a social program, that we, that's how we, we socially support one another. And that's the church's vision. Spiritual, financial, and social, let me say this to you very clear. I understand that some of these things are not all on the same level with each and all. I ask you to make an effort to support them in ways and matter. You can be in this church and some people don't like the first leg. They don't like it. They don't want to come to Sunday school. They don't want to come to Bible study. They don't want to come to church regularly. They don't want to go on a prayer line. I'm talking to you as a pastor of the church. They don't like the spiritual growth vision of this church. All they want is the second part. They got people here who just want to give money. Well, money is not everything. We need you to have a relationship with God. So there are some other people here who the social part, that all they're after. When we're having membership appreciation, when we're having this, when we have, no, it's not only this, but you must be able, now I understand all of us got, you know, our strong areas. We're not asking you that, but we're asking you to make effort to meet us somewhere. 
you can't come here and say this other part of the vision. I ain't care about this vision. Only this one I care about. That's the vision of the church. You have to make peace and develop your. That's why we're teaching it. So that our people can hear it, can be in power, and people can grow and begin to make amends. I said something bad, and I'm going to say it again. I said something bad to one of you guys I was talking to. don't know who it is. I said that. Just because some people have stayed long in a church does not mean that they have fully accepted the vision. It's almost like some people go and they talk to a girl. They want to date this girl. And the girl gave them that thing. And they know they don't want to do this or they're not going to do it. But because, you know, like people that start coming to you because they want to date you and you say, let's go to church, I like church. They start praying with you. By the time they marry you, they start praying. They start coming to church. They, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to make some sense to you so you understand something that I'm being very honest that sometimes people will act in certain ways but they're not down with that particular vision. They will want to change it. And that sometimes there are some members like that. They're in the church but they wish that certain vision of the church can go away. They're just there. After a while, oh, you know, no, this is the church's vision and we must all work in ways that we are able to support the church's vision. When we do that, God will bless us. There is one part on the spiritual growth that uh, 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 is not in the, is under, is pregnant in the vision, is uh, numerical growth, evangelism. If something is healthy and is spiritually sound, it will grow. Do you know that when our bodies are healthy, it grow, it grows, it develops, and stuff like that. We must as a healthy church, once we put spirituality, we must be able to invite, promote other people and stuff like that. I, I also like this as I was as I'm about to get from social, is that I want people to understand that if one of us are doing something in this church, it's not by force that everybody in this church may be able to support and be there. But let a good number of us in this church support that person. If you, if, if, if you are a Facebooker like me and you see one of your members say, oh, today is my birthday. Amen. Amen. I know you're not idol and pastor. I know you got plenty of work, but you can just test, happy birthday, my sister. God bless you. This is, you know, Pastor Mojo from Hope International. At least it's called social support. Let people see it and say, wow, people from your church and this, that. Because those are people looking for a place where they can belong. They're looking for place that has vision and culture to be there. Let's support one another. Let's support one another. And I'm not talking about anything dogmatic. Oh, I got to be here. I got to be there. No, don't be on no burden. People tell you, oh, you know what, to pass a whole lot. I won't see you say, because I couldn't make it. Be honest with them. Don't disrespect them. Don't be, just tell them, say, because I couldn't make it, so you didn't see me. When has it become a law that if we're doing something to pass a whole, I got to be there. When has it become a law? This is just our culture. Let's understand. Let people want to do things because they love it, they want to do it, and they are able to do it. And we talk these things. So uh, 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 those are the things that we want to, to, to bring to ourselves, that these are the vision, that the social support is very important. Don't just look at the spiritual side. You think why when we go to Africa now, you think why we carry food? You think why we provide food? Because how can you be... Have you ever heard before an empty bag cannot stand? You want to keep preaching to the people, and you know I'm long winded, right? I can talk. I don't have shortcuts in talk. I talk long. You want to preach to somebody for long that is hungry. Why are you trying to do, Pastor? Trying to kill them? Did you feed them? It's social. So if you can make eating spiritual, that's good too. Eating sometimes can be spiritual. Well, we want to do something. I want to, I think, uh, 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 Tom, that's all of my notes, right? Okay, so let's stop here. Let's collect the church's tithes and offering, and then I can take question and answer. We can close. Let's stop. <laughs> oh, you are about to say the same thing? You are very spiritual right now. You're not on social level. You're on spiritual level. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, even as we take an interval to collect our tithes and our offering and seeds and financial support from your people. We bless those watching online that they may be a part of this joyous worship in giving. And we bless those who are in person. Father, 
bless your people and meet them at the point of them in this month of favor favor somebody finances and in jesus name amen says uh geraldine will come around so begin to get your question after you we're going to flip over into question minister deborah there's a mic in front of you minister ben can you come and get his mic and let's okay no okay gave and it will come back to you good measure Press down, Deborah, look at me. Shaking together and running over, give, and it will come back to you. Minister Chubby, when you give, give to the Lord. Yeah! This is what we call in singing. I hate that note, I hate that note, I hate that note. And it, 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 got, it got to end right there. But, but let's bless, let, let's just thank God uh, uh, as we, 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 we move into question and answer time on the vision. I want you to carry my Bible studies home. I want you to make this Bible studies your own Bible studies. I want you to go meet your husband. I want you to meet your wife. I want you to go meet your friends. I want you to go meet your fiancé. I want you to go meet the man you're talking to or the woman you're talking to. You hear me? I'm on Facebook and I'm speaking my heart. I want you to ask them, what's our vision for our life? What's your own vision? This is my own vision. You know, sometimes people get mad. You did this somebody when a woman tell you a vision, you get mad. Oh, you, you, you alone want to do all of this. So what? That's my vision. Sometimes the man tell you his vision, you want to get mad. So what? Each of us, you got, and then we have a God. I really want you to go, and I want you, if you are part of a family, I want you to have a family vision. I want you to see how you can work with members. If it's not your Nicholas family, if it's a standard family, you can do that. And when you do those things, God we bless you. God will bless you. It's time for question and answer. I want to close right on time. Question and answer. And if you happen to send a question and answer on Facebook or YouTube, uh, hopefully if my media director gives it to me, I will answer. Yes, Reverend Francis. Um, Papa, I have a question. This is um, something I, um, like we have different types of people, right? So like you, you are like a vision giver and I see other people as vision owners. So is that, I wanted to see, you know, are some people just born to be vision owners, you know, and some people, or is it just because that they don't have a, a vision? Because I believe that God has a plan and a purpose for everybody. Yeah. But some people are just, you know. I think it's a beautiful question. To to answer. Answer. I think she has a beautiful question. So in different places, I, who happen to be a visionary at Hope International in different places, I follow other vision and I carry it. So there are always places in our life where we follow vision, where we carry some quantity of vision and we add. Say for instance, if you are leading any department in this church, please, I love your question, Reverend Francis. If you are leading any department in this church, you, you, you have this laxity, you can carry the church's vision that was handed to you. Every ministry in this church has an expectation and a vision. But then also as a leader of that ministry, you can incorporate your own vision to and certain things to do. Because even if the vision is to go to Dallas, I gave you, Irene, this vision that every, once every quarter, we want you to carry this church to Dallas. That's the vision from the church. The vision did not say you must always take us in a bus. The vision did not say you should take us in plane. The vision did not say you should take us in train. The vision said you should take us to Dallas. The leader now has the leeway to dream in the vision that is giving them to be able to do that thing. So sometimes I look at some people and like uh, 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 Reverend Francis is asking, you must be able to, 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 to uh, there is vision in every leader to move some things. And so let us all understand that in different places we find ourselves, we are the vision carrier. We are not the vision giver. In certain places, we are the vision giver. Every departmental have here cast vision in the different department. They can come out like pastor in my department. I think that we want to do so and so thing. I think that it ties into the church vision. We say yes, go ahead. For as long as you add in bits and pieces to propagate the church. So yes, ma'am, uh, in different segments of our lives, we implement visions. In other places, we give vision. 
and it's okay like that. So you need to know where you are at any point in time. Are you the one that is, is required to implement a vision in a place or to give a vision in a place? Just know where you are and start with that and move from there. That's it. Some of you here are managers on your job. You gave visions on your job. You move people. I know many of you that are in leader, leading role to your job. But when you come to church, you also listen to the pastor. Pastor say, okay, let's stand up. Let's do this. You do that. Or whoever's standing here. I must say there are times I follow instruction here. Minister DeBrow say, come on, let's stand. Clap your hand. I stand. I clap my hand. Anything they tell me to do in church, I don't say my name is Emmanuel Butcher. Anything the leader tells me to do in church to the glory of God that I'm able to do, I do. So, yes. All of us can have a vision. And the last question, the last answer to your question, Reverend Francis, is that that's why I thought about personal vision. That's why I thought about couples' vision. That's why I thought about families' vision. That's why I thought about organizations' vision. And I thought about nation vision. There are levels of vision. This church is not the only place for you to be in vision, to say like, I have, you, you, you should have a vision for your own life even before you come to a church. And if not, the church can help you by the way I'm teaching tonight. I, I want to become a, a tormentor. I know the way I can do English. When I start something, everybody can be like, where are you going? I pray that my voice will torment you from this teaching tonight. That if you don't have a vision for your life, may you begin to hear this ugly voice. Wherever you are, in your room, in your living room, in your bedroom, may you continue to hear this ugly voice. I need a vision. I need a vision. I need a vision. May you receive a vision for your life in Jesus' name. I want to pray something. Not only do, may you receive a vision, I want to pray for you. May your vision that you already have begin to be activated and to come to fruition in your life. Please somebody say amen. It's a good prayer. Don't worry. I just bought the English, but it was a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? So, I uh, Francis, did, did I help the question? We are all visionaries. We all carry different visions. They're individual people. They are, you know, this, that, some people and stuff. So, hey, any more question? answer? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I Amen. just want to ask something to what uh, Reverend Francis was saying about if some people were meant to be just vision career. Uh, if you have a vision, there are no careers. That is not a vision. Yeah. So, uh, no, as Daddy already stated, there is what we call personal vision. So, do you have a vision career? You have a personal vision. In different areas. Yes, and that's your personal vision also needs somebody to carry, to help you carry that vision. So, that is the point of Any time I know one of the reasons why I succeed as a pastor in this church is firstly because of God and you. You guys are the one that helped me because you, you, you listen to what I say in the Lord and you do it just like our, our, our Minister Ben is saying. If there is nobody to carry on what you're saying, then what are you? What, what, what vision you got? What you can do? So there are different places with it. Says Kisha got a, a, a beauty salon and stuff like that. If I take a part-time job with you, you know, Maybe one of these days I'll let you hire me as an intercessor <laughs> to be your prayer advisor. The truth of the matter is uh, I can even be the senior pastor of this church. If I work with her, I will follow her vision. It doesn't mean I don't have a vision. It doesn't mean something wrong with me. It just means that in this area or context I find myself, my job is to follow a vision there. You know, you know they will fire you as a pastor? If you work in corporate America and you go there and you begin to act like pastor there, come on, everybody stand to your feet, clap your hands, move to the left, do that, and be like, huh? What were you, and, and stuff. So there is a place, there is a time to do this. I think if there's no, yeah. Yes, I have another one or two. Okay. Uh, the other concept I have here is like somebody say, I don't want to be a follower, but you want to be a leader. <laughs> so I saw somebody wrote on that on Facebook. I don't want to make comment on it. I just realized that uh, maybe... There's a little bit of insanity in there. But uh, what I want to say here is to buttress that with um, the concept of balancing the vision, you know, because it's very important for us to balance the vision. Some of us that have been in this church for long, and we have uh, new people joining us, uh, so uh, we have to make sure that we do it in a very uh, liberal way, that we, uh, we are able to make sure that we promote the vision of the church. We, will not, we should not allow our own vision to 
to overshadow, no. you know, that no. cannot work in a church, you know. We have to make sure that we follow it, we balance it, the social aspect. Um, you, we are not, I don't think the, the, the vision is forcing anybody to do that kind of thing. It's encouraging us because we want to promote, we want to promote the vision of uh, what God has laid into the man of God's heart to direct us. Shortly we say, taking us from hopelessness to hopefulness. You know, some of us, if we look back, we retrospect, uh, we tell our stories, you, you will be, you'll be amazed to see how far we have gone. So please let us work on that. that uh, Daddy, thank you very much for the I thank you. Uh, I thank you for helping to buttress the teaching. That's the whole idea, the idea we can make anybody do anything. We can only appeal to you. If we give you the vision, you think the food that we're going to eat tonight. Says Yaza, thank you for cooking and thank you for coming. You look real good with your red head in church. In Bible study, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Now, 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 now look at what I'm saying. Look at what I'm saying. There are 99% of a pastor will never joke with his member like that. And this, because it's a, but we just have a different spirit. We have a different flow. We have a different way we carry ourselves and stuff like that. That's our, just our culture that we have a vision here. If these people in hospitality, it's not pastor that cook the food. It's not pastor that gave the money. It's not church that gave the money. But these people, one after another, they gave money. It's about people helping to fulfill the vision. It's a vision that every time we gather, let it be something for us to break bread on. I really want to thank God. And today, did I go on the intercessory, I mean, on the uh, 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 hospitality line? So those of you who are not intercessors, I felt led while I was studying this lesson. I went there, I told them on behalf of your leaders, I just want to join it and say thank you. You know, because as I begin to teach about the culture and the vision, it's a culture, you've, it's a culture to eat food every day. You think if we don't eat food here every day, then I, no, we don't have to. It's not compulsory. It's not by force, but it's a culture that we adapt. That if some of you come from work and you come here, there is something of. When we used to go to work, I get my load to go back. Man, when this church started, New Day, and I was working, I was working, I think, up to two years when this church started. I'll go to work and stuff. i make sure whoever was in it, that's why I like food business. Whoever was in the I told them, fix something for pastor. <laughs> and it fixed my little to go back. I said, look, it was nice hanging out there. You already understand the heart. Can you stay? Our heart tonight is that we will begin to rally around hope culture and hope vision. No, it's not by force. Even the vision, even the vision, it's not by force. Because you know what? Stand to your feet. I'm going to tell you something that me and my wife was talking. Do you know even God cannot force me to become safe? Even God. With all the power and how almighty he wish he can if you want to. But God decided to give me my free will. If I don't willingly accept Jesus Christ, I can be saved. So who are we to force anybody? I want you to go out tonight and say the purpose of teaching hope culture and hope vision is to make an appeal. It's to be able to encourage us so we embrace the vision and embrace the culture. God bless you so very much. Our Father and our God. We want to thank you for our online viewers, our hopers, Hope Nation online. We want to thank you for our special guests, our family and friends who have joined us online. We pray for them. Oh God, that the vision will come to pass in their life. That visions will be activated. If any man or woman under the sound of my voice watching is trusting you for a vision, give it to him, give it to her. Father, the same prayer we pray for those watching online. We pray that same prayer for those of us who have come in service. My Father and my God, everyone whose feet is treaded in this church, may God activate your vision. Every step you take in this church, may your vision be activated. I prophetically decree and declare every step you take, may it take you closer to your vision because you came here tonight. May your steps begin to take you closer to your vision. And it's in Jesus' name. Please say amen. Please say amen. Please, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, join us again. Hold on, don't, don't go offline. Stella, so, please, today is Wednesday, right? And today is what date? The fourth. This, uh, tomorrow is Thursday, the fifth, Friday, the sixth. Minister Deborah will be preaching on Friday. It's first Friday. We have a six hours of chamber. I want to see some of you who have never seen a long time on 
the prayer line. I want to see you, and I want to see you in person. I want this number to be twice or thrice of the number that will be here on this Friday. Somebody shout glory, hallelujah. This Friday, six hours of chain prayer and first Friday service. God bless you. God bless you. Hug somebody. Tell them support the vision and the culture. Hug somebody. I'm watching you. Hug somebody. I'm watching. I'm watching. Support the vision and the culture.